Matt Walsh's new documentary, What is a Woman, has made me transition from I don't really care about this at all to, hey, something really creepy is going on here. About a month ago, I posted a video discussing a children's book called Johnny the Walrus by Matt Walsh. The main point of the book is that parents shouldn't be pressured into transitioning their kids from one gender to another based on something the children say when they're children. As I pointed out in that video, I don't have terribly strong political views. On most issues, I would classify myself as an I don't care etarian. I'm not saying the issues aren't important. I'm saying that the rest of you can figure them out, and I'm happy to abide by whatever you come up with on most issues. On certain issues, you could saw my head off. I'm not backing down ever. But on most issues, call me Bennett because I ain't in it. Now, one area I've never paid much attention to is the debate over transgenderism and related topics. But David, why did you make a video about Johnny the Walrus if you're not interested in the topic? Well, in that video, I was talking about companies like Amazon deciding what people are allowed to read. I'm extremely interested in the fact that a small handful of corporations now have massive power globally over what we're allowed to say and what we're allowed to hear and what we're allowed to read. I'm really, really interested in that. So anytime some topic I usually don't think about or talk about somehow overlaps with that, monopolies becoming the new global thought police, I'm happy to ante up my two cents. So I shared my thoughts on Johnny the Walrus and Amazon and Disney and the so-called don't say gay bill until I had no further thoughts to share. I said everything I could possibly say, I thought I was done with the topic. But then I got an email from a transgendered Christian woman addressing some of what I said and some things that Matt Walsh has said. The email was very respectful towards me, and it included links to a number of sources. I decided to read the email and the sources and make a video discussing the points that are raised. But the email blasts Matt Walsh and his goals and his methods. So before I made a video going through a bunch of criticisms of Matt Walsh, I figured I should know a bit more about Matt's position because I didn't know much about his claims beyond what I read in Johnny the Walrus. Fortunately, I saw that a documentary titled What is a Woman was coming out. No pun intended. So I decided to watch it and review it in order to understand Matt's position and then to later examine criticisms of his position. So What is a Woman, the documentary. For the first 44 minutes, roughly half of the film, I wasn't very impressed. Then it transitioned to very interesting. Then it transitioned again to very disturbing. Speaking of transitioning, before I review Matt's documentary, let me transition to a product everyone should be using. If you watch my videos, you're probably on the internet quite a bit, like me. And like me until recently, you may be pretty stupid about internet security. There are people and companies who are constantly trying to steal your data, your personal information, your passwords. There are companies that are tracking what you do online so that they can sell that information to the highest bidder. When you go online, you need a VPN, a virtual private network. So click on the link in the description box and get a subscription to Atlas VPN. It's what I use. Atlas VPN is the best VPN deal on the market. Developed by top cybersecurity experts and IT engineers, it sends all of your internet traffic through an encryption tunnel. It hides your IP address, even if you're using public Wi-Fi. It blocks malicious links, ads, and trackers. It monitors data breaches and warns you if your personal information or passwords have been compromised. In other words, it keeps you safe from bad people who want to steal your stuff. If you sign up now, you can be fully protected for just $1.99 per month. That covers all of your devices with one subscription. So click the link in the description box, download the app, get a subscription, and turn it on. Going from horribly exposed to extremely safe will only take you a couple of minutes, so get Atlas VPN and practice safe surfing. While you're surfing, 
you may come across a documentary. What is a woman? I don't know if I'm supposed to give spoiler alerts for a documentary, but too bad you're not getting any. I mentioned that I wasn't very impressed with the first half of the film, and that's because the first half of the film was pretty much exactly what I was expecting. Based on the little bit I know about Matt Walsh, I was expecting him to interview therapists, professors, doctors, and to ask them what is a woman and to make them look stupid when they can't answer. And there was a lot of that during the first half of the film. Some of the people Matt was interviewing were very nice, very friendly, and even though Matt was usually careful and respectful in the way he was asking questions, you could tell that he ultimately wanted to make them look stupid. And if you think someone has an incoherent position, that's one way to do things. You show that even the experts can't answer simple questions because they have an incoherent position. And if the position that's being imposed on students and professionals right now is incoherent, that needs to be pointed out. A huge part of this debate is about language. One side is saying something like, hey, there are words like woman that have been used in a certain way for a very long time, but you all need to change the meanings of these kinds of words. And the other side says, well, what are the new meanings? What's the meaning of the word woman that we're supposed to use now? And the response seems to be, we don't know. We don't know what these words mean anymore. But the entire world needs to abandon the way they use these words and adopt our way of using these words, even though we sound like we don't know what we're talking about. To a novice like myself, the idea of telling the entire world to change the way they speak and write and think when you can't even tell them what they're supposed to be changing to, seems a bit odd. So, when I said that I wasn't very impressed with the first half of the documentary, I didn't mean that Matt wasn't covering anything important. I only meant that it was exactly what I was expecting. But then, in the second half of the documentary, Matt took some unexpected turns. He visited a tribe in Africa and started asking them the same kinds of questions about gender identity. And they thought the entire discussion was absurd. And you know what? They weren't at all tolerant of the gender identity issues Matt was explaining to them. This raises a question. We're told here in the West that if you have a traditional view of gender, if you're not willing to accept the new rules and the new language, you're an evil bigot and a hate monger. But a lot of people in different parts of the world are not going to accept the new rules and the new language. So are they evil bigots and hate mongers? Have Americans and Europeans turned out to be the good guys because we're far more tolerant of these ideas in America and Europe? In other words, would trans activists say that Americans are morally superior to, say, an African tribe, at least on this issue? I'm asking because I always hear that we're the worst people in the world. So, I found Matt's trip to Africa fascinating. But when he got back from Africa, that's when I started hearing about a bunch of stuff I didn't know about. I didn't know about people like Alfred Kinsey and John Money and their theories and their experiments and how their views and methods came to dominate so much of our thinking in the West. I didn't know that every child who decides to transition generates, on average, $1.3 million for pharmaceutical companies. Now, that's the sort of thing that could change my perspective on all of this. A few years ago, when the biggest companies in the world started tripping over each other in their efforts to show how pro all things LGBTQ they were, I thought they were just trying to avoid a potential blowback from the woke mob. But if pushing gender ideology on children is just an easy way to get more of them to transition, and getting kids to transition puts billions and billions of dollars into the bank accounts of the biggest companies in the world, that would seem a bit more diabolical, wouldn't it? Keep in mind, I do not know what I'm talking about yet. 
Apart from some brief research on Alfred Kinsey and John Money, I have not studied the claims made in What is a Woman? I will take a closer look at those claims, and I will be examining responses to those claims. But if it turns out that massive corporations are using their influence to convince a generation of young people to transition in order to make endless trunks of money, well, let's just say they will have earned my attention. Whatever side of these issues you're on, I encourage you to watch What is a Woman? It's a very good introduction to the debate. If you can confirm claims made in the film, please share any information you have in the comment section. And if you can disconfirm claims made in the film, be sure to share that as well. If you'd like to watch the film, you can do that at The Daily Wire. The link is in the description box. Check it out and let me know what you think.